Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Nick Page. And I'm Liz Wade. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand, no matter where in the world they live. When you meet someone, always shake their hand. Say please when you ask for something. Stand up when an older person enters the room. Every country has a system of manners, that is, rules for behavior. Each particular culture has a history of accepted behavior. People teach these manners to their children. Everyone in a culture usually agrees on what is good behavior and what is not. When you visit a new place, you need to learn the manners for that place. But what happens when many different people come together? What if they don't know the rules in this place? The internet is a place like this. Today's spotlight is on rules for behavior on the internet. In 2012, two and a quarter billion people across the world used the Internet. People use the Internet for many things. One of the most important is communication. The Internet helps people communicate quickly. And there are many different ways to communicate using the Internet. People email longer messages to friends or co-workers. They post short messages and links on social networks like Facebook or Twitter. Or people add their comments to news websites and online group discussions. But in all these ways of communicating, people sometimes write hurtful things. That is why many people think it is important to teach Internet manners. Some schools and universities now teach students correct Internet behavior. There are many rules to follow. Today, we will look at just a few of them by asking the questions who, what, how, and where. Who? The first question is, who are you writing to? It is very important to remember that the other people using the Internet are real people. This sounds funny, but it is easy to forget. Rob Frappier is community manager at the company Reputation.com. He helps people communicate safely on the Internet. He says, It can be hard to relate to people you are talking to online. In real life, you would not openly insult someone to his or her face. So why do it on the Internet? Reading hurtful words online is just as bad as hearing them in person. People may be less careful to have good manners online. 
This may be because they don't have to use their real name. This protects people, but it can also affect their behavior. Randy Zuckerberg is the marketing director for Facebook. She thinks that the Internet would be better if people used their real names. She told a discussion group, People behave a lot better when they have their real names down. I think people take advantage when no one knows their real name. They feel like they can say whatever they want because no one can see them. What? Secondly, consider what to write on the Internet. Everything a person writes online will stay on the Internet forever. And a person does not know who will see what she writes. Heather Armstrong learned this when she wrote about her workplace online. She tells her story on her website, deuce.com. I started this website in February 2001. A year later, I was fired from my job because of this website. I had written stories that included people in my workplace. My advice to you is do not do this. Never write about work on the internet unless your manager knows and agrees to you doing it. Many people have had problems with their job this way. Some people have even had problems with friends or family members. Shelley Watke writes for the website reputation.com. She teaches people and companies how to protect themselves online. She shares this idea. Follow the five minute rule before you post online. The next time you are tempted to send a negative post, wait five minutes before sending it. You may change your mind about what you want to write. By waiting, you will have saved yourself from possible problems. How? The next question to ask is how to write online. The most important thing is to fit the situation. For example, Christy uses the internet for work and for her social life. When using the internet at work, she always makes sure that she has spelled words correctly. She writes in full sentences with correct language. But at home, Christy uses a different way of communicating on the Internet. She uses less correct words and smiley faces. Christy knows which way to communicate in each situation. One thing that is especially difficult to communicate over the Internet is humor. When people speak face to face, they can hear the way a voice sounds. They see a person's face and body language. Without voice and body language, 
It is very easy to understand something wrongly. Rob Frappier of Reputation.com talks about the golden rule. That is, you should always treat people the way you would like to be treated. He says, The golden rule is especially important when it comes to what you say and how you say it on the Internet. Before posting anything online, think about what you are saying. Is it unkind? Would you be happy if someone attacked you in the same way? The golden rule works as well on the Internet as it does in real life. Do your best to obey it. Where? The last part of Internet Manners is asking where you are sending messages. It is easy to accidentally send messages to the wrong person. Check that you have the right address before sending any messages online. Make sure that you are sending something that the person will want to receive. And remember to protect yourself and other people by removing addresses and personal information. More and more people are using the Internet. They use it for more and more purposes. Internet use will probably increase even more in the future. So it is important for people to know the rules of good behavior. Who, what, how and where are important questions for every person who uses the Internet. Have you ever been hurt by something over the Internet? Or sent a message to the wrong person? Tell Spotlight about it on our Facebook page. Just search for Spotlight Radio. Or you can email us at radio at radioenglish.net The writer and producer of this program was Rena Dam. The voices you heard were from the United Kingdom and the United States. All quotes were adapted for this program and voiced by Spotlight. You can listen to this program again and read it on the internet at www.radioenglish.net This program is called Good Rules for the Internet. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.